Welcome back to Winning Souls for Christ, a radio show designed to teach, equip, and empower you for the mission of the new evangelization. I'm your host, Isaac Longworth. Today, we're going to be talking about how to move our parishes and ministries from maintenance to mission. You see, many, if not most, of our parishes have not been focused on the exterior mission of actually going out into the world to make new disciples. But instead, a lot of our parishes, a lot of our focus as a church has been focused on the interior work, a more inward focus, maintaining all the current structures that are already present in our parishes. And so if our parishes are going to be effective in the work of the new evangelization, if they're actually going to be going out into the world and transforming it for Jesus, then they need to be able to switch from a culture of maintenance to a culture of mission. And so to that end, what we're going to do today is discuss three specific things. First, we're going to talk about why it's necessary for us to change from maintenance to mission in the first place. Why do we need to make this change? Second, we're going to talk about how we can do this, how we can take our culture of maintenance and transform it into one that is designed to go out on mission to make new disciples. And third, we're going to talk about what obstacles will we face when we try to make this change. So first, why is it necessary for us to change? Second, how can we make this change? And third, what obstacles will we face when we try to do this? Does that sound good? So first, why change? Why change from a maintenance focus to a focus on mission? Well, the reason that we need to switch our focus from maintenance to mission is because of the great commission that the Lord Jesus gave us right before his ascension. So in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Jesus says to his disciples, go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So here we have this call from the Lord to go out into the world, to go to the ends of the earth, proclaim the good news, and to baptize and make new disciples. This was the call of Jesus, and his apostles understood it, and the early church understood this commission and they put it into action. That's why we see in Acts chapter 16, verse 5, we have this beautiful description of what the early church was like. And it says this, The churches were strengthened in the faith, and they increased in numbers daily. Increased in numbers daily. The early church was characterized by expansion, by growth. The apostles went out and evangelized. They trained up the next generation of disciples, and then those disciples went to their family, to their neighbors, and preached the good news of Jesus. And the effect was that Christianity spread like wildfire throughout the known world. This focus on mission. And throughout the history of the church, this hasn't stopped, right? There has always been this understanding of the primary importance of the mission of evangelization that has been entrusted to the church. Saints have gone about the work of evangelization. Popes have sent out massive missions to expand the kingdom of God. Like, for instance, in 596 AD, Pope St. Gregory the Great sent what was called the Gregorian Mission to the pagans of England. He sent these Augustinian monks to evangelize the people of England, and within one year, they had baptized over 10,000 people this huge growth. In 1540, St. Francis Xavier traveled to India, Japan, all over Asia, tried to get into China, but died just before he did. Estimates vary between 100 and 700,000 people that he baptized in his lifetime. This huge harvest of souls for the church. And throughout the history of the church, martyrs have died, have shed their blood for the sake of of spreading the gospel to the ends of the world. This is the mission of the church. 
And Pope St. Paul VI, I think, put it best when he wrote in his encyclical Evangelii Nunciandi that evangelizing is in fact the grace and vocation proper to the church, her deepest identity. She exists in order to evangelize. This is something powerful that we as Christians can meditate on, that the fact that the deepest identity of our church is to evangelize, that the Lord has put this church here on earth to spread the gospel. That's who we are. We can't forget our deepest identity. We can't forget that we exist to evangelize. So if this is our heritage, if this is our tradition, if this is our deepest identity, then I ask you, brothers and sisters, is this something you saw taking place in your own parish community? Did you see your parish having explosive growth? Did you see it extending into the neighborhood? Did you see it focused on mission? And I hope that it was. I hope to God that this was your experience growing up. But unfortunately, most of us, our experience of parishes growing up was not like this. It was something different. It wasn't focused on mission, but rather many of us grew up in parishes that were focused on maintenance. We had an inward focus. We were focused on maintaining all the structures, all the activity, activities of the parish. And that meant that we used up all of our time, all of our finances, all of our energy, not to go out and make new disciples, but rather were used for inwardly focused things to benefit ourselves. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about things like parish bingo nights, breakfasts, parish picnics, opening up the church doors to all these outside social groups like 12-step groups or scouts clubs or knitting socials. Now, again, I'm not saying that these things are bad in and of themselves. And we'll talk more later about how we can transform some of these things into this focus on mission. But they can't be a priority. Using the church as a hall to be rented out is not our deepest identity. It needs to be, the parish needs to be a center for evangelization. In many of our parishes that were focused on maintenance, we never saw any new faces in church, except on the rare occasion that a Catholic had moved into our neighborhood, a new Catholic, or perhaps a new baby was born. That would be a new face in the pew. But other than that, there was never any new faces. It was always the same people. And there was no effort to go and reach out to the unchurched to bring them in. In a maintenance-style parish, the parish leadership, be it the pastor or his staff, they never put any emphasis on outward mission. So that meant in the preaching, there was never a call for the faithful to take up their baptismal role as evangelists. There was no implementing of programs of evangelization designed to bring in new people into a life-changing encounter with the Lord through retreats or other programs. There was no hiring of staff specifically for the purpose of evangelization. You know, someone like a youth minister or a director of evangelization, a maintenance parish doesn't want to put resources into that. And this, unfortunately, was the experience of many of us in the Catholic Church, maintenance rather than mission. Well, how can we change, you might be wondering. Well, I think one of the most important things we need to do before we try and change our culture from maintenance to mission is to remember our identity. Keep going back to who we are. We are a church that is supposed to be evangelizing. And once we remember that identity, we then let that identity shape the parish culture, shape everything that we do, every decision that we make so that it's directed towards this mission. And that means that the leadership of the parish needs to be constantly clarifying the mission of the parish as evangelization, teaching that to the people, teaching that to the staff, making sure we're always heading in that direction, and then making sure that every decision and action of the parish is directed towards that. 
And that means that we need to cut out things in the parish that can't be modified to fit this mission of evangelization. So some of the things we mentioned earlier, like bingo and knitting socials and breakfasts, if that can't be worked into the mission of evangelization, then perhaps it's time for the parish to cut them out. And that means that then all of our resources, all the regular work of the parish is then directed not towards all these other distractions, but towards the primary goal of evangelizing. So that means that in the mass, the priest will be routinely preaching on the kerygma. He'll be routinely using his homilies as an opportunity to evangelize. Because we do not live in a time of the church now where we can assume that everyone in the congregation is already a committed disciple of Jesus. People come to Mass for a whole bunch of different reasons. They could come because that's just something they were used to doing growing up. They could be culturally Catholic. They could have some vague sense that this is something that I'm supposed to do to be a good person. But they could be going to Mass without having that encounter with the Lord, that life-saving faith in Him. And so the priest needs to be constantly preaching on the kerygma, preaching on the goodness of God, that he loves us, that he made us for a relationship with him, but that we have broken that relationship because of our sin, because of our rebellion towards him. And that the answer to our rebellion, the answer towards our sin, was that God sent his son, Jesus, who died and rose again for us so that we could have this opportunity to be brought back into right relationship with the Father, preaching on the necessity for repentance, turning away from our sin, putting our faith in the Lord, and welcoming his gift of salvation. This needs to be constantly preached on. When it comes to preparation for the sacraments, again, families are coming to the church for many different reasons. Whether it be baptism, confirmation, first communion, marriages, people come to receive sacraments from the church for many different reasons. And some of them aren't always 100% correct. For instance, I know some people who thought that confirmation was a kind of church graduation. This was just something you did when you were getting ready for high school, that the church put on this confirmation and then you graduated from the church until you needed to come back to maybe get married at some point in your future. So people have all these erroneous views of sacraments, and yet they are still coming to receive them. And so a parish that is on mission shouldn't waste this opportunity. See it as an opportunity to evangelize these families. Perhaps in the preparation for the sacraments, on top of all the catechesis and the theology that goes into explaining what the sacraments are, also involve presentations of the basic gospel message. Tell people about the Lord and what he's done for them. Maybe require that families that are coming through for preparation for the sacraments go through some kind of evangelization retreat or program that the parish hosts on a regular basis in order to make sure that they're not just coming to receive sacraments and then leaving and never seen again, but that they're actually becoming intentional disciples with a living relationship with the Lord permanent members of the parish. This is what a mission parish does. A parish that is on mission will hire staff that is on board with all of this. And that means all the staff, those who work in finances, those who uh, work as secretaries and music directors, because all of these different ministries have a part to play in the work of the new evangelization, right? But the pastor also with his leadership team needs to be hiring new staff whose job is specifically geared to evangelize. That means maybe hiring a youth minister whose job is to reach out to the youth in the neighborhood and invite them to make a commitment to the Lord to become a disciple of that parish. Or maybe it's a director of evangelization whose job is to institute and run programs of evangelization, retreats designed to bring in non-believers and have them become members of the parish, have them become committed disciples of the Lord Jesus. Now, it's easy, of course, for a parish to say that they're on mission, to maybe whip up a mission statement and 
pin it on the door of some office somewhere saying that we are a parish that is dedicated to evangelization, but it's another thing to actually act on that. And there's two really good litmus tests that you can look at a parish to see if they're in maintenance mode or in mission mode. So first time, look at the calendar of the parish, look at the events that the parish is hosting, and this will tell you what the parish's true priority is. If the parish calendar is cluttered up with card socials and scouts club meetings, well then maybe the parish's identity deep down is not an evangelizing one, but it's a social hall where people gather together. Perhaps if all the parish calendar is, is charity fundraiser after charity fundraiser, or soup kitchens every single day, or charity fundraisers as, as dances and bingo and all these other things, maybe the church is not an evangelizing church, but instead is just a charity as their deepest identity. Now, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being social. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing charity work. We as Catholics should be doing charity work. But what is our priority? Are we using our socials? Are we using our charity work as a way to evangelize? Maybe having a testimony said at the beginning of the meal, if we're hosting a soup kitchen, and then at the end, having Parish volunteers pray with those who came to receive food, have them experience the Lord, inviting them to come to Mass, inviting them to come to a retreat, so that not only do we feed them physically, but we feed them spiritually, introducing them to the Lord. This is how an evangelizing parish thinks, using every opportunity to preach the gospel to people. Another litmus test to look at where a parish is when it comes to maintenance and mission is to look at their resources. Where are the parish resources going, whether that's money or other financial things, but also manpower, volunteers, energy? Where are all these resources going? Are they going towards the mission of evangelization, or are they going just to keep all the structures of the parish maintained? Now, of course, there's so much more to parish renewal than this, right? We just don't have time to go everything in a half an hour show, but there are ministries out there designed to help you take your parish to this mission level. So for instance, there's this ministry called Divine Renovation, founded by a priest named Father James Mallon. And they have awesome resources to help you transform your parish into an evangelizing parish. Same thing with the ministry called Amazing Parish, founded by a Catholic layman named Patrick Lencioni. These are awesome groups that can equip your parish with the necessary tools and skills to switch from maintenance mode to one of mission. Very, very good resources that they have. So I highly encourage you to check them out and go over all the things that we just can't talk about in today's show. And you may be with me to this point. You may be saying, Isaac, you know, I want to see my church transformed like this. But I will warn you that you will face backlash when you try to implement these changes. And you might be wondering, well, why? Why would any Catholic get in the way of this move from maintenance to mission? Well, here's the thing. If you propose to the people of your parish, do you want to see your church alive and on mission, reaching people with the gospel of Jesus? I doubt you'll find anyone who will say no to that. They'll obviously all say yes. But then when you actually start to make changes to get this happening, that's when you'll get pushback. Because a characteristic of who we are as human beings is we don't like to change. People don't like to change. I don't like to change. You probably don't like to change. It's so much easier to just stay in our comfort zone. And this is what can be an opposition to changing towards mission. For instance, I know a parish that was trying to switch from maintenance to mission. They were hosting uh, evangelization programs like Alpha in the parish. They had started a young adult outreach group. They had done a parish mission to kind of revitalize the parishioners, preach the gospel to them, get them to that encounter with the Lord. And yet one of the oppositions that the pastor faced was that his staff kept coming to him and opposing all of these changes because they said, Father, 
This isn't what we signed up for. We didn't sign up for this much work. We don't want to handle all of this stuff. We just want to go back to the way things were. It was so much easier back then. For instance, if you're doing sacramental prep and you have some people who come for the sacraments and you propose maybe getting more committed to the parish, going through the retreat, hearing the fullness of the gospel before they receive the sacraments, you might get pushback from them. They might not want that level of commitment on their part. They might say, I just want to baptize my kid. Why do I have to go through all this extra work? Groups within the parish that have been there for a long time will not want to surrender their territory, whether that be use of the church hall or resources from the parish for the sake of mission. They won't want to surrender what they've always had, even if it's for the work of evangelization. And then, of course, growth in a parish involves sacrifice on behalf of its existing members, a selflessness and change, which they might not appreciate, right? If new people start coming to church, the locals might say, well, they've taken my pew. I've had that pew for generations. Or now I have to show up earlier to get a seat because of all these new people. You've inconvenienced me. So you can see how all of these things can be in opposition to switching from a culture of maintenance to a culture of mission. People don't want to put the work that is needed into changing the parish to a mission focus, and thus it's so easy to lapse back into maintenance. And this will be a constant temptation. But brothers and sisters, let's not kid ourselves. Maintenance mode parish is a dead end. It's a dead end because our parish life as we know it is dying. We know that in many parts of the church, we are seeing a massive apostasy. People are leaving the church in droves. The church attendance at mass is declining. Sacramental use is declining. And that means that when maintenance mode is implemented, that means that all you're doing is maintaining a slow decline of your parish. And that decline ends in death, right? Parishes are closing. Parishes are being amalgamated and then closing again. If you're just maintaining that slow decline, you're maintaining a slow death. And so from a purely practical perspective, we need a radical change from maintenance to mission just in order to survive as a church. But we are to do so much more than just survive. God's plan for his church is not just to get by. It's to thrive. It's to grow. It's to extend to the ends of the world. It's to preach the gospel to all nations. This is who we are. The founder of my community, the Companions of the Cross, which is who I'm a seminarian with, was founded by a priest named Father Bob Bedard. And Father Bob said this quote that just fires my heart up to see the church revived. He said, I see the church waking up and coming explosively alive to the point where it, with the power of the Holy Spirit, will shake the earth and the nations with its dynamic presence. That's what I want to see. I want to see our church not just surviving, but shaking the earth, preaching the gospel to the nations in the power of the Holy Spirit, winning souls for Christ. That's what God wants for his church. But are we willing in our parishes, in our ministries, maybe even in our own hearts, to leave behind the comfort of maintenance and embrace the challenge of mission? Now, it's not the easy path. I would be lying to you if I would say that mission is easier because it's not. It's so much easier to remain in mediocrity, but it will be so worth it when we see our parishes coming back to life, our pews filling up, people having their lives transformed, our neighborhoods being reached with the gospel as we reach the lost with the good news of Jesus. This is our mission, and the Lord is calling us to mission with him. And I ask you, are we going to follow that call? Are we going to follow that call to leave behind the mediocrity of maintenance and go forward headlong into the mission that the Lord Jesus has prepared for us?
Well, we've reached the end of our time now, but hopefully something in this show has taught, equipped, or empowered you for the mission of the new evangelization so that you can go out and set the world on fire for Jesus.